Hi, welcome back to day two on solving differential equations. We talked a lot yesterday about how we solve differential equations by separating out the variables. Well, today we're going to take a look at some word problems. Now, we're going to be using these in the next few days and later on this year, so this is a very important topic for us. So we want to write and solve a differential equation. Now, the first one says, it says the rate of change of R with respect to S is. This is just like what you did in analysis for one. You're going to write an equation. And they're saying the rate of change. Well, anytime they say whoop, the phrase rate of change, they're talking about a derivative, ROC. And they're saying the derivative is with uh, the derivative of the function R is we're taking the derivative with respect to S is proportional. And we're going to talk about this. This phrase right here is proportional. So the first thing we're going to write is the derivative part, dr, the change in r, with respect to s. Then it says the word is, now you learned back in algebra 1 that is just means equals. And then we have this word proportional, that means we are four portions, instead of conportional, I'm joking. All right. Proportional means that we're going to multiply by a constant. That's from algebra 1. So we're going to multiply by some unknown value. And we're going to call that value k for now. So, we're, so s is proportional, uh, excuse me, so our derivative is proportional to some constant k times the 6 minus s. So we're going to go k times 6 minus s. And now we just apply our rule from yesterday. I want to separate out my variables. So if we take a look here, I am going to bring all my r's to one side and all of my s's to another side. Since there are no r's, I am just going to get the following. We would get, oops, sorry about that, dr equals k 6 minus s ds. Now notice, I didn't bring the k over to the r. k is just a constant. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. Of course, this becomes r. k is just a constant, so I can leave it alone. And when we integrate here, this is a u substitution, or you can don't have to use u substitution. You can just go, this becomes 6s minus s squared over 2 plus c1. And there is our rule right here. And that is what r could would be equal to. And of course yesterday we said, well if we know s and k and r we can find c. And we'll talk about that tomorrow and later on. But right now that's all we want to have. All right, so let's take a look at number two. Number two says the rate of y, the rate of change of y, again, they're talking about a derivative, R of C, you know me, of y with respect to t is inversely proportional to the cube of t. So again, we got this phrase now inversely proportional. We'll talk about that. Anytime we see the word is in algebra, we say that's going to be our equal sign. So the rate of change of y with respect to t. Well, this is saying we're taking the derivative of y with respect to t is. Now, inverse, we're directly proportional, meaning we're going to multiply. Here, we're going to divide instead. So this, our k this time goes on top, and we're going to divide by the cube of t, t cubed. And just like the last one, we are going to separate our variables. All our two variables are y and t. Remember, k is a constant. k is like a number. Like it's like five. So when I separate my variables, right? So that's what we gotta do right next, right? We have to separate the variables. I want my y's on one side, and my t's to the other side. Now, because y is already on top, I'm gonna keep my y on the right side and bring, I mean, on the left side and bring my t's over. So this becomes dy equals k. And because I'm going to integrate this, I'm going to go t to the negative 3 dt. Be careful, because if I leave it like 1 over t cubed, you might be thinking, oh yeah, that's natural log. No. So bring the power up. And now we can integrate. We would get y equals, again, k is a constant. I can leave it, times, we're going to add 1, t to the negative 2, over negative 2, plus 
C1. We don't like the I don't like the negative exponents. Whoops. So I'm going to write this as y equals negative one half k one over t squared plus c1. Now this is okay to leave it like this, and that's fine. However, we talked yesterday, and you might remember this from yesterday. K is a k is a constant, and if I take a constant, multiply it by one half, I'm just going to get another constant, and I can use that to simplify this. So I can rewrite this as y equals just k times one over t squared plus c1. Now, if you notice, I don't write k2. Remember, like we did, we would write this as c1, c2, c3 when we mess with the constant. But k, we're just going to leave it as just k. So we just leave this as k times one over t squared plus c1, and both are acceptable. This is a lot easier to work with, which we're going to find out tomorrow. All right, number three. Let's see here. It says the rate of change of p is the rate of change of p is with respect to t, varies jointly. Now we see this phrase called varies jointly. We'll talk about that. So the rate of change of p is with respect to t. So there's our derivative part. Man, there's our ROC. You know me, I'm the ROC. Let's rock this down. So I would write this as a change in p with respect to t is, now we gotta talk about varies jointly. Varies jointly is we're gonna multiply multiple parts together multiple parts by k, by our constant. And by the way, this k it actually has a friend name to it. It is called the constant of proportionality. Right there. So what that means is I'm going to take k, and I'm going to multiply it by p, and I'm going to multiply that by a minus t. Now, at this point, we want to separate our variables. I want anything that has a t, bring it over to the left side. Anything with a p, bring it over to the right side. k always stays on the right. We never mess with the constant. So what I have to do is I have to divide by this a minus t. So that's going to give me this one. Whoops. I ah, sorry. I have to divide by p. One over p dp equals k times a minus t dt, right here. And now I'm going to, of course, solve this. By integrating. Now, you might recall, this becomes natural log, the natural log of p equals, when we integrate here, k is a constant, so I'm just going to leave it alone, and that gives me a t minus t squared over 2 plus c1. Alright, here's where the fun begins from yesterday. You might recall, we don't like p like natural log of this, so we're going to exponentiate both sides. So we're going to, this becomes then the absolute value of p equals e to the k times a minus t, whoops, Mess that up. A, hold on. Sorry about that. This becomes K A. This becomes T minus T squared over 2. Now remember, I can use my algebra rule since I'm multiplying and I'm adding the same bases. Remember this rule yesterday. If I have A to the M times A to the N, I can write that as A to the M plus N. I'm just going backwards, times e to the c1. That's a very lengthy step. And then we're going to say, let e to the c1 equal c2. And now what we're left with is the absolute value of p equals c2 e to the k a t minus t squared over 2. Solving for p, 
Now, remember, we don't have to worry about the plus or minus because C is a constant. It's just going to absorb it. So if you want to, you can write this as C3 if you want to, e to the k, a t minus t squared over 2. And there we would have it. Remember, this is worth a lot of points right here. So let's go through the points real quick. Remember, just separating off the variables is worth one point. The antiderivatives, one point for each side, the plus C plus 1. Look at that. Plus 1 right here for setting this up, and then plus 1 for your final answer. This is worth a lot of points on the AP. So make sure you show all of your work. It doesn't take long, but you do want to get the practice. All right, so if you're bored, try solving this one. This is a lot harder to do. One thing you can't do, though, is you just can't just... Uh, this is a proportional. You can't change it to addition or subtraction. See if you can try it. A little bit of extra credit for you if you, wanted to, if you can solve it. A little bit of extra credit for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.